good afternoon uh, since sincere greetings to everyone who has joined to our online event for a tribute to professor ms shaminathan the father of green revolution of india this program is organized by michael modhusudan datta college shabrom south tripura in collaboration with IQAC, MMDC, Shabro. We, on behalf of MMD College Shabro, welcome all the dignitaries present here. Today, we have among us respected Professor Sharut Kumar Chakraborty, retired Vice Chancellor, Uttar Bongo Krishi Vishwavidyalaya, Kuch Bihar, West Bengal as the chief orator or resource person. You are most welcome, sir. We have among us Honorable Sri Ansi Sharma, Director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tipura, as chief guest. You are most welcome, sir. We have also among us Professor Badal Datta, Dean, Faculty of Science, Tripura University, as the guest of honor. Welcome, sir. We have also among us respected principal, MMD College, Shabrom, Dr. Anupam Guha, and secretary, uh, Teachers Council, MMD College, Shabrom, Dr. Dipankar Dev. Both of you, welcome, sir. At the very beginning, uh, we, on behalf of Shabrom, uh, Michael Modushudan Datta College pay uh, heartiest respect to the uh, departed soul of Professor uh, M. S. Shami Nathan, who is the glorious son of Mother India, who recently breathed his uh, last on the 28th October of 2023. As we know, Dr. M. S. Shaminathan was born in the year of 1925 in Chennai. Professor Shaminathan is the father of Green Revolution in India and he is the founder of the M. S. Shaminathan Research Foundation in Chennai. Dr. Shaminathan has been a prominent figure in India's agricultural renaissance, advocating for sustainable agriculture and sustainable food security. He has received various prestigious uh, honors and awards like Padda Bhushan, Padda Vibhushan, uh, SS Bhatnagar Award, Raman Megasheshai Award, Albert Einstein, World Science Award, World Food Prize, Indira Gandhi Prize, and uh, Mahatma Gandhi Prize uh, of UNESCO and many more. He uh, was a fellow of leading scientific academies and chaired the task force of uh, many international projects of agriculture in uh, the countries like Afghanistan and Myanmar. Dr. Shaminathan was elected the leading legend of International Union of Nutrition Science at the 20th International Congress of Nutrition. Today, we have assembled here to show a tribute to such a glorious son of Mother India. At the beginning, I cordially invite Dr. Anupam Goha, Principal MMD College, for a welcome address to the gathering. Please, over to you, sir. Thank you, Aru. Good evening to all. Respected Sri N. C. Sharma, Director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tripura, Professor Badal Dotto, Dean, Faculty of Science, Tripura University. Sir, my sincere thanks to you both for your kind presence and cooperation. My heartfelt thanks 
to Professor Shorup Kumar Chakravarti, retired Vice Chancellor, Uttar Bangga Krishi Vishu Vidyalay, Kuch Bihar, India, for your kind cooperation and participation as speaker of this program. All the faculty members of MMDC Shabroom, non-teaching staffs, MMDC family members, other faculty members from various colleges of our state and outside state. My dear students, thank you all for your participation on this virtual platform. Our mother earth is a huge ecosystem, contains biotic and abiotic components. Among biotic components, we, the inhabitant, the human being, are the highly evolved animal. We are in the driver's seat, looking every aspects of the world. We are in the era of computer science. Huge development of science and technology is going on. Still, the civilization is in the age of danger. Today, 5th November 2023, Remembering the legendary agricultural scientist Shaminathan, 98, passed away on September 28, called the father of Green Revolution, played a major role in the set of changes introduced in farming in the 1960s and 70s that helped India achieve food security. Green Revolution is associated with agricultural production, which is the period when agriculture of the country was converted into an industrial system due to the adoption of modern methods and techniques. The basic approach was the development of high yielding varieties and cereal grains, expansion of irrigation infrastructure, modernization of management techniques, distribution of hybrid seeds, synthetic fertilizers and pesticides to farmers. The key advantages of the Green Revolution include the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, enhancing food production, decreasing the cost of food products, etc. In contrast, the disadvantages include deforestation, health problems due to the pesticides, depletion of soil and nutrition, etc. However, we have to take oath for protection of our mother earth by using biochemicals, biofertilizers, making the mother earth pollution free. I like to share one important thing, my dear participants. And my, I, my, I am feeling very happy, happy today and I am convey this information that Professor Shorup Kumar Chakraborty, our guest, main speaker of this program, was directly associated with Professor Shaminathan. Dear participants, so I hope you all enjoy the deliberation of Professor Chakraborty. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Over to Shorup. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Anupam Goha, Principal, MMD College, uh, for your nice uh, welcome address to the gathering. Now, uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, respected Sri Ansi Sharma, Director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tripura, uh, to say a few words regarding the significance of today's event. Over to uh, Sir Sri Ansi Sharma. Uh, thank you all. I, I am audible. I am audible. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. I am audible. I am audible. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So, respected principal of Shabram Degree College, and uh, I am very much. Pleased to welcome our main orator of this program, scientist, and the ex-vice chancellor of 
উত্তরবঙ্গ কৃষি বিদ্যা মহাবিদ্যালয় অ্যান্ড আওয়ার রেসপেক্টেড প্রফেসর ডক্টর বাদল দত্ত অফ ত্রিপুরা ইউনিভার্সিটি হু আর এক্সপার্ট ইন দ্য প্ল্যান সায়েন্স অ্যান্ড আওয়ার প্রিন্সিপাল সব হি ইজ অলসো এক্সপার্ট ইন প্ল্যান সায়েন্স অ্যান্ড হি ইজ অ্যারেঞ্জিং মেনি সেমিনার্স অন মেনি ইম্পর্টেন্ট টপিকস অ্যান্ড দিস উইল বুস্ট আপ দ্য সায়েন্টিফিক থটস ইন দ্য কলেজ এজ ওয়েল এজ দ্য টিচিং কমিউনিটিজ এজ ওয়েল এজ দ্য স্টুডেন্টস অফ দ্য স্টেট আই এম ভেরি মাচ হ্যাপি that you have taken a subject who is the father of the green revolution of india without him we cannot develop, uh, think of development of agriculture in india as you all you are aware that the those who are senior citizen of india they directly know that that was the time of 1960s thousands of people lakhs of people were deprived of feeding deprive of food and the uh, uh they were bound to sleep with the um, empty stomach day after day and accordingly they died then the government of india as well as the people of india were very uh, anxious that how will uh, help the people to survive on the earth in our country it was a very bad situation we had to depend on the uh, other developed countries of the globe for the food items this was a very very uh, bad time of indian history at that time uh, dr shaminathan he was a young young scientist and he thought that he should devote himself for the betterment of the people of india and for saving the people of india for enhancement of uh, agricultural activities and enhancement of crop uh, crops uh, intensity in the country and uh, you will feel that and i also see that this is the basic research in the agriculture uh, has given result for the development of the uh, food crops in india so he mainly worked on the biotechnical aspects of plant and how this hybridization how the biotechnical changes can improve the uh, crop intensity can increase increase the yields of the crops and and finally he found out there some varieties which can be developed in the field of india particularly where the vast land is there for agriculture in northern and uh, west and uh, northern uh, and uh, uh, north northwestern sides of india particularly in punjab uttar pradesh haryana sides and accordingly all the farmers respond to the new varieties like ir64 ir8 ir36 and accordingly this response was a good response and that was the result of the tireless active that is uh, that is uh, uh, of the work of work of saminathan and uh, accordingly the india has boost could uh, boost up the production of crops in india so this is the, this is the time where where the sustainable development in crops uh, uh, in agriculture has started so now this is the result of this saminathan works now we are that is completely completely uh not dependent for food in outer world uh, even we can um, export the food items to other countries also so this is the re- only i can say that is the brainchild of our great person of india dr saminathan so in this respect i request all the plant scientists who are who have uh, assembled here the students assembled here 
you please do work that is basic work for the uh, sustainable development and use of our available land our available plants so that that can be improvised improvised and get a, we can get a uh, better opportunity for using the uh, plant uh, uh, that is plants and land uh, uh, so that we can earn we can uh, we can uh, develop uh, develop our country in such a way that we, uh, we become the one of the most uh, developed sector of the world, particularly in the agriculture sector. So I hope who have been assembled here and the scientists who are present here, uh, they will work in this line and uh, their work will add many things to the development of our uh, food production, development of our other activities related to the plants and landfills, etc. So uh, with these words, I again welcome all who have been assembled here and particularly the uh, scientists who have, uh, will give the tech, uh, technical, dis uh, will give, uh, uh, take part in the technical discussion and give, uh, give the valuable suggestion for development and uh, the extension of the works of our great source. all and uh, thank you all uh, thank you very much sir sri uh, honorable sri nc sharma sir uh, director department of higher education government of tripura uh, for your very nice deliberation regarding the contribution of professor shaminathan's uh, shaminathan uh, in the uh, uh, sustainable development in the uh, agriculture sector and also uh, for elaborating the significance of today's program. Again, many, many thanks, sir, for uh, uh, being with us uh, uh, from your, uh, spending the time from your busy schedule. Now, uh, I would like to cordially invite, invite uh, Professor B.K. Datta, sir, uh, Dean Faculty of Science, Tripura University, to deliver his speech uh, in this event. Over to BK Dutta, sir. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, in this seminar, the key speaker, Professor Saurav Kumar Chakravarti, the ex vice chancellor of uh, Uttar Bongo Kisi Vishwidaloy, Mr. N.C. Sarma, the director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tripura, Dr. Anupam Guho, principal, Michael Mosudan Dotto, Government Degree College of Sabroom other faculty members and students. Uh, today, uh, Michael Mushandotto organized a very important seminar to tribute the late Professor M.S. Saminathan and who is the father of Green Evolution in India. If you look back before independence, India was like not that. But after the separation of Burma, the present Myanmar, uh, and later after independence, India treated into Pakistan and at that time East Pakistan now Bangladesh was the was the land for the production of rice 
and Burma at that time produced huge amount of pulses. And West Pakistan, that is the well channeled, well irrigation system, produced huge amount of wheat. So India faces severe food crisis at that time. Later, India government initiated a treaty with US government uh, that is named as IP, IL4, IP480. Still, I remember that during my childhood, I have seen that the wheat, which, is, which was imported from the US, very small size and reddish in color. And that very small size wheat is not edible at that time. But India at the time is very, very first acute, acute crisis of food grains. So time is goes on. Later, in 1967, Professor M. A. Saminathan, along with Norman Borlag, initiate the production, the food production, the crop production system in India. Professor Saminathan, in his take several steps. At that time, in every land of India, there is single crop, potash produce single crops, and there is no proper irrigation systems, no proper fertilizers, no proper pesticides. So, Professor Saminathan introduced to increase our production systems in India, that is irrigation and double crop systems, use of inorganic fertilizers and pesticides. And gradually, we achieved the result. Professor Saminathan, along with Norman Burleigh, introduced in India the beautiful wheat grain, that is Sonalika and Kollan Sona. And these two dwarf varieties of wheat adapted in every soil condition, in every climate. So, India achieved their achievement. Side by side, rice also. Several rice varieties are introduced and indigenously breeds. Professor Saminathan, along with the team and government of India, set up uh, Indian Agricultural Research Institute in New Delhi and several other branches in the other areas. So India achieved now. India has a surplus foods and we export rice and wheat. Although uh, um, there are some there are some shortfalls. We cannot ignore, we cannot <coughs> forget the contribution of young contribution of Professor M. S. Saminathan. The young generation the young generation, uh, specifically the young researchers, are not um, aware what about the India in the 1960s, 70s. Still, I remember that there is a word in Bengali that is Bhadramas, Akaler Mas, and at that time, 
we know that bhadramas means a akal a scarcity of force and there is a beautiful poem written by buddhadev bosu bhadrev dine bhavna now there is no bhadramas there is no akal there is no crisis of force there are so many force but there is series there is series of of achievements that india achieved this situation so i am requesting every young researcher every young scientist to remember professor m s harminathan's contribution and to never to, uh, to know about our country's agricultural sector because agricultural sectors of uh, sometimes we we have seen that uh in monsoon suppose there are four days torrential rains and then the and human most of the peoples are very much uh, very much um, uh discussing the matter hi there is so many there is huge rains in like three to four hours but this is necessary but this is necessary for the production of foods agricultural foods because we have 140 crores of people people 140 crores of people and if you consume 50 grams of rice or wheat every day or 100 grams of wheat and or rice every day can you imagine how many how many food grains will require for the 140 crore peoples so i thanks dr anupam guho for organizing such a uh, good topic to tribute professor late professor m s hamanathan the father of green revolution uh so thank you dr guho and the other faculty members of mykeni mondosudan dotto college of sabrooms so thank you everybody thank you uh, very much uh, respected professor badal dotto sir uh, dean faculty of science tripura university uh, for his nice deliberation uh, regarding the contribution of professor m s shaminathan in the field of agriculture uh, now uh, it is the prime time of our uh, today's program we have among us the respected professor sharup kumar chakraborty retired vice chancellor uttar banga krishi vishwavidyalay kuch bihar west bengal as the chief orator uh i would like to share a few words uh, about professor sk chakraborty here professor chakraborty did his bsc honors in agricultural science from bc kavikalani uh west bengal in the year of 1980 he did his msc and phd from indian agricultural research institute new delhi and he did postdocs from usa and france his field of specialization is plant biotechnology and plant pathology number of his total publication is 408 among which there are 70 uh, research paper published in international journals and 69 research paper uh, published in national uh, journals he has authored six books his uh, number of his total google citations uh, is 3327 and his age index is 21 yes yes the country is the country leader 
of the 42 genome sequencing consortia and he served as the director of two research institutes of ICAR. He also acted as the project coordinator of All India Coordinated Research Project on 42. Lastly, uh, he was posted as a vice chancellor of Uttar Honor Kishi Vishwamitra Kushya Festival. The most important thing is that Professor Shakaboti had the personal contact and work experience with Professor Janis Swaminar. Now, I would like to cordially invite uh, Professor S.K. Shakaboti to enlighten us on the work and life of Professor Anish Shaminathan, audience. Thank you and good afternoon to all of you. Am I audible clearly and visible? Am I audible and visible? Hello? Yes, sir, audible, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, Honorable Chief Guest of today's function. Sri N. C. Sarmaji, Director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tripura, Professor Badol Dotto, Dean, Faculty of Science, Tripura University, Dr. Anupam Guha, Principal, Michael Modusudan Dotto College, Sabrum, South Tripura, Dr. Deepankar Dev, Secretary, Teachers Council, MMD College, my dear students, colleagues, faculties, other staff, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, before uh, I uh, start my lecture, actually, I would like to thank Professor Guha for arranging this solemn function to show and also give me, give me an opportunity to pay my homage and tribute to the greatest son of Mother India, Professor Saminathan. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Guha. On 28th September, Thursday morning, by about 11.15 this year, Mother India lost one of her precious jewels, and the people of India lost the father of Green Revolution, Bharat Vibhushan, Professor M. S. Swaminathan, the great warrior, mother of India, of mother of India, mother of India, who fought tirelessly to ensure food for all, breathed his last at the age of 98 at his home in Chennai. Mankumbu Shamba Shivan Swaminathan was born in Kumbakonam Madras Residency on 7th August 1925. He was the second son of General Surgeon M. K. Sambasivan and Parvati Sangammal Sambasivan. At a age, young age of 11, he lost his father and thereafter was looked after by his paternal uncle. He was educated at a local high school and later at the Catholic Little Flower High School in Kumbakonam, from which he matriculated at, at the age of 15. His father was a popular doctor and quite naturally, his parents wanted him to study medicine. With that in mind, he started off his higher education with zoology. But when he witnessed the impact of the Bengal famine of 1943 during the Second World War and shortages of rice throughout the subcontinent, he decided to devote his life for ensuring enough food for the needy people. Despite his family background, and belonging to an era where medicine and engineering were considered much more prestigious, he chose agriculture. He went on to finish his undergraduate degree in zoology at Maharaja's College at Trivandrum, Kerala, now known as the University College, Tiruvananthapuram of the University of Kerala. He then studied at the University of Madras, Madras Agriculture College, now the Tamil Nadu Agriculture University from 1940 to 1944 and earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Agriculture Science. So he basically he did graduation twice, once in Zoology and then B.Sc. Agriculture uh, 
during 1940 to 44 in 1947 he moved to the indian agricultural research institute in new delhi to study genetics and plant breeding he obtained a postgraduate degree with high distinction in cytogenetics in 1949 his research focused on the genus solanum with specific attention to the potato social pressure resulted in him competing for the civil service examination after graduation and he was selected to the Indian police service. At the same time, an opportunity for him arose in the agriculture field in the form of a UNESCO fellowship in genetics in the Netherlands. He chose studying genetics instead of joining IPS and joined the Wagen Indian Agriculture University's Institute of Genetics in the Netherlands as UNESCO fellow. He worked there for eight months on biotic and abiotic stress tolerance of potato. During this time, he also made a visit to the famous Max Planck Institute of Plant Breeding Research in Germany. In 1950, he moved to study at the Plant Breeding Institute of the University of Cambridge School of Agriculture. He earned a Doctor of Philosophy degree in 1952 for his thesis, Species Differentiation and the nature of polyploidy in certain species of the genus Solanum, section Tubarium. Dr. Swaminathan then spent 15 months in the United States. He accepted a postdoctoral research associateship at the University of Wisconsin's Laboratory of Genetics to help set up a USDA potato research station. Laboratory, this laboratory, this Wisconsin's genetics laboratory at that time had Nobel laureate Joshua Lederberg, probably you all heard about him, on its, on its faculty. His associateship ended in December 1953. Dr. Swaminathan turned down a faculty position in order to continue to make a difference back home in India. He returned to India in early 1954. There were no jobs in his specialization in the country. And it was only three months after a letter that he received an opportunity through a former professor to work temporarily as an assistant botanist at Central Rice Research Institute, or CRRI, Kotak. Now it is known as ICR NRRI Kotak, National Rice Research Institute. At Kotak, he was under an Indica Japonica rice hybridization program started by Krishnaswami Ramaya. This team would go, go on to influence his future work with wheat. Half a year later, about six months later, he joined Indian Agricultural Research Institute in New Delhi in October 1954 as an assistant cytogeneticist. I will stop here since I am sure you all have a fair idea about his achievements at IRI and also in the global arena thereafter. Professor Swaminathan was the director of Indian Agriculture Research Institute during 1966 to 72, director general Indian Council of Agriculture Research during 1972 to 79, principal secretary Ministry of Agriculture and Irrigation Government of India during 1979 to 80, member planning commission and chairman scientific advisory committee to cabinet Government of India during 1980 to 82, Chairman UN Science Advisory Committee 1980, Independent Chairman FAO Council during 1981 to 85, Director General International Rice Research Institute or IRI, Los Banos, Philippines during 1982 to 88, President. International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources during 84 to 1984 to 90. President Worldwide Fund for Nature India during 1989 to 96. Chairman National Commission on Farmers of India during 2004 to 6. President Paguas Conference on Science and World Affairs 2002 to 2007. Chairman High Level Panel of Experts to the World Committee on Food Security from 2010 onwards. He was also the member of Rajya Sabha, a nominated member, Government of India, UNESCO Kustav Chair 
in eco technology and chairman m s swaminathan research foundation chennai he was the recipient of several coveted awards already it was mentioned even then i will just uh, uh, repeat it uh, including actually several awards he got including the most prominent chair shanti swarup bhatnagar prize 1961 padma shri in 1967 ramon magsese award for community leadership in 1971 padma bhushan in 1972 Albert Einstein World Science Award in 1986 first World Food Prize in 1987 Padma Vibhushan in 1989 Dr B P Pal Memorial Award of NAS 1995 to 96 UNESCO Gandhi Gold Medal France 1999 Franklin D Roosevelt Four Freedoms Medal Netherlands in 2000 Indira Gandhi Prize for Peace, Disarmament and Development in 2000, Sahamitri Medal of Royal Government of Cambodia in 2007, Lifetime Achievement Award of All India Management Association 2007, Golden Peacock Lifetime Achievement Award in 2007, Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award 2007, Signing World Leadership Award Singapore in 2007, First World Agriculture Prize in 2018 he was the recipient of 84 honorary doctorates from universities around the world and guided 77 phd scholars he became fellow of the indian academy of sciences in 1957 indian national science academy 1962 national academy of sciences india 1976 Royal Society of London 1973 National Academy of Sciences USA 1977 Russian Academy of Agricultural Sciences in 1978 Royal Swedish Academy of Agriculture and Forestry 1983 National Academy of Arts and Sciences USA in 84 National Academy of Sciences Italy 1985 European Academy of Arts Sciences and Humanities 1988 founder fellow of the World Academy of Sciences or TWAS TWAS in 1983 National Academy of Agricultural Sciences New Delhi 1990 he was the founder member as well as member for two times of the executive council of National Academy of Agricultural Sciences and its president and its uh, president for two times from 1992 to 96 and 2005 to 2007 again bharat vibhushan professor m s swaminathan belong to a class of 20 top asian thinkers of all time and one of the three most eminent sons mother india ever had he was counted only after mahatma gandhi and gurudev rabindranath tagore Mahatma Gandhi gave us freedom from foreign slavery Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore gave us freedom of mind and thoughts and Professor Swaminathan ensured freedom from hunger for more than 140 crores of our brothers and sisters when i thought of a suitable title for him in line with Mahatma and Gurudev the word that came to my mind spontaneously was vishwamitra he is the person who is an embodiment of the indian philosophical phrase vasudeva kutumbakam there is hardly any country in this world whose government has not benefited from his benevolent outlook he virtually helped the entire world to fight the curse of hunger and malnutrition but at the same time assigning utmost respect to all living as well as non living entities that make up the harmonious ecosystems of our beautiful blue planet it make it make it may take several days to narrate the ways and means by which he helped different countries to address ecologically and socially difficult situation there is a very well written article by doctors p c kesavan and r d ayer published in the december 2014 issue of current science that attempted to crystallize his contribution in world development i will request you to go through that i will also desist from talking about his scientific leadership 
or philanthropic contribution to the world. Keeping in view the vastness of his achievements, it will be impossible for me to fathom even a minute fraction of it. Rather, I will narrate a few occasions when I felt his influence in my life. My first encounter with MS was not, of course, a close one, but was connected with an examination. In the BSc Agriculture Entrance Examination of Vidhan Chandra Krishi Vishwavidyalaya Kalyani, West Bengal, in the year 1976, there was a question about the expanded name of MS Swaminathan. During that time, uh, during 1972 to 79, Professor Saminathan was the Director General of ICR. I did my higher secondary from a village school established by the renowned educationist of Renesa Bengal, Pundit Isarchandra Vidyasagar, in memory of his mother in Bishingha. A teacher of that school once talked about Professor Swaminathan and he also gave the full name as Mankombu Shambhasivan. Swaminathan. I did not understand the meaning of the initials then, but somehow it caught my imagination and I remember it. Therefore, I could answer that question. I understood the full meaning of his name and particularly the term Monkombu only after joining as director of ICR Central Tuber Crops Research Institute, Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala in the year 2012. In the year 2014, his 90th birth anniversary was celebrated in a solemn function at his ancestral village Monkombu in the district of Alipura, Kerala. I had the good fortune of attending that solemn occasion and paid my homage to Professor Swaminathan at his own ancestral village amongst his relatives and followers. After finishing my graduation from BCKV Kalyani, I joined IARI New Delhi for master degree in the year 1981. Professor Saminathan was already a national hero by that time. He was the deputy chairman of planning commission at that time. I remember Dr. B.P. Uh, Pal Auditorium of IRI would always be full up to the brim whenever Professor Swaminathan would come and address the students and staff. We probably heard more than 100 of his inspiring talks during our IRI days spanning five years from 81 to 1981 to 86. He had an uncanny ability to connect with his audience, irrespective of their age or status. His speeches were like sonnets with the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita and the grace of a symphony. Each word of his speech had a resonance in our mind that we would feel long after going back to the hostel. In 1982, we heard that Professor Swaminathan is joining International Rice Research Institute, Manila, Philippines as Director General. I hope you are all aware of his famous statement in this connection to the, to the, uh, the then Prime Minister of India, Srimati Indira Gandhi. When Madam Gandhi was reluctant to leave him from his assignment in the planning commission, he said, and I quote, Madam, I sincerely feel that one must leave when one is most wanted and not the otherwise. It made us all very unhappy, but somewhere inside us, there was a proud feeling that an Indian scientist would be heading a world-class institution for the first time. I did my MSc dissertation work at Nuclear Research Laboratory uh, at IRI, a laboratory built by Professor Swaminathan during 1982 to 83. I remember a room was kept in third floor of NRL building in his honor that somehow gave us solace from his absence. In 1989, I received my PhD degree during IRI convocation. I remember he was conferred DSC in the same convocation, uh, convocation and I got the first chance to have a close encounter with him. We requested him for a photograph with him and he readily obliged. I consider those photos as rare treasures in my custody. I also rediscovered Professor Swaminathan in my professional life in a strange way. During my IRI days, I never realized that MS had his finest scientific accomplishment in potato. 
I joined Central Potato Research Institute Simla as ARS scientist in the year 1986 when Dr. N.M. Nair, an ardent admirer of Professor Swaminathan, was the director there. Strangely, Dr. Nair also expired next day, that is 29 September 2023, after Professor Swaminathan's death. I remember Dr. Nair assigned me the task of agrobacterium-mediated transformation in potato. My training was in the area of plant pathology, genetics, and biochemistry. When I started reading about potato cytogenetics, I rediscovered that Professor Swaminathan was virtually a pioneer in that area. He started his epoch-making research career with cytogenetic studies in potato in 1949 at Agriculture University, Wageningen, the Netherlands, and later at, uh, at Cambridge University, England, where he obtained his PhD in genetics in 1952. He also did his postdoctoral research on potato at University of Wisconsin, USA. His paper in Nature, 5th November 1955, on overcoming the cross incompatibility among some diploid species of solanum, revealed his simple yet most ingenious way of thinking. Cross incompatibility was particularly important in the crosses between solanum pinatisectum and solanum bulbocustinum, the only species then known to possess genes for resistance against late blight of potato. In fact, he was offered an attractive research come teaching position in Wisconsin during that period, but he chose to return to his motherland where he had no job then. The Wisconsin group, led by Professor John Helgeson, later mapped and cloned the late by resistance genes called RB from Solanum bulbocustinum. I visited the university in the year 2005, discussed with the group leader, Professor Helgeson and Jiming Jiang, and facilitated transfer of that gene to CPRI Simla. CPRI has now developed promising varieties from that material originally identified by Professor Swaminathan. Professor Swaminathan always had a keen interest on research and development in potato. In several occasions, he asked for detailed information on recently released varieties of potato developed by CPRI Simla about late blight resistance breeding and transgenic project with the RB gene received from University of Wisconsin and about transgenic potato encoding the amaranthus albumin 1 gene of amaranthus hypochondriacus, uh, which is also popularly known as Ramdana, developed by our group in collaboration with NIPGR New Delhi. My last encounter with Professor Swaminathan was on 20th May 2015 at Tiruvananthapuram when I was the director of ICS Central Tuber Crop Research Institute. I invited him to visit our institute and he readily agreed for a personal interaction with all the scientists of the institute. However, on the scheduled date, his health deteriorated and he was unable to come to the institute. Even then, he invited me along with my colleagues to the hotel in Tiruvananthapuram where he was staying for, uh, for an interaction. He discussed about, uh, for about one and a half hour about the strength and weakness of tropical tuber crops and also about their role in sustainable development of rural livelihood. He also emphasized about the opportunities and the thrust areas in which the institute was concentrating. Professor Swaminathan took keen interest on biofortified varieties like Eoloflase cassava variety, Sisarna, beta carotene rich sweet potato varieties, Sri Kanaka, ST14, and anthocyanin rich Yam variety, Sri Nilima. He emphasized on development of eco technologies for sustainable cultivation of cassava and other tropical tubers. He appreciated the ongoing work on soil test based fertilizer recommendation, organic farming soil and nutrient conservation technologies and studies on response of tuber crops to climate change. He expressed his happiness over the biopesticides developed by ICR CTCRI. He opined that the large scale demand for the biopesticides from farmers across the state and outside is the testimony of its efficiency and acceptability. The integrated disease management systems developed by the Institute was also appreciated. He emphasized that the eco technologies like biofertilizers, biopesticides, biocontrol agents, etc., should be treated as biological softwares 
for sustainable agriculture development. He was delighted to know about the miniset technologies for rapid multiplication of planting material or tuber crops. He specially emphasized on the importance of biofortification and value addition to tuber crops and appreciated the outstanding work carried out by the institute on that aspect. Professor M. S. Swaminathan excelled in every sphere of his life. He was a brilliant student, an accomplished researcher, an able research administrator, and a philanthropist of highest order. Let us pledge to emulate at least a minor fraction of his illustrious life. He was a crusader for, for evergreen revolution. Let us reorient our thinking and action towards a greener future. In the words of Professor A.B. Joshi, former director IRI, Dr. Swaminathan has been the most eminent research scientist which India has ever produced, none like him in the past, and there shall be none in the far distant future. We salute, we salute you, sir, and pray for your never-ending blessings in all our endeavor. Thank you. Jai Bharat. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your uh, very nice and uh, informative speech on the life and works of Professor M. S. Shaminathan. We have been informed with many unknown facts uh, about this glorious son of Mother India from your deliberation, sir. Now, uh, it is the time of interaction. Uh, there are some questions uh, in our chat box. Uh, we have uh, selected a few of them as uh, as, no, uh, as uh, due to shortage of time. So, uh, first query is from uh, Sri Shubham uh, Shah. Uh, he asked that. Uh, say about any of your memorable incidents uh, with Professor M. S. Shaminathan. Now, uh, is it for me? Yes, sir. What is yeah. Okay. Now, no, I have already narrated. Actually, the first time I met him uh, during 1989 uh, at the IRI convocation, he was the recipient of DSC degree. And you know uh, the stature of the man that time. But we approached some of our students. We approached him for a photograph, personal photograph with him. Readily he ag agreed. He's a humble person. And uh, I have several, I have already shared one photograph with uh, Professor Guha with him. That was my, really, I, I, I'll never forget in my life. Uh, um, a great, great man. And later, of course, in CTCRI in Trivandrum, um, we had a direct interaction with him um, uh, regarding the tuber crops, uh, how the research work should proceed and, and what, are, uh, what are the areas we should concentrate. He took very keen interest. Even in potato, uh, he was always actually asking in email what is happening, what is, uh, what is the update about many of the issues. Because he had his uh, say PhD degree and postdoctoral in potato. So he had a um, very keen interest on potato. And always he was sending email personally to me to know about what is happening, what are the new varieties coming, what are the, uh, the led by resistance uh, sources we are using. So uh, I cannot forget. Thank you. Uh, there is another question from P. Bhumi. How long have you worked with Professor Swaminathan? Professor Swaminathan say, I said actually when we joined IRI as student in 81, that time he was about to leave India and he joined as Director General of ERI. So uh, therefore I have no direct uh, work experience with him 
but uh, definitely i worked in the laboratory established by him in the nuclear research laboratory in iri but i had, don't have any personal experience of working under his guidance thank you uh thank you uh, very much sir again for uh, uh, being with us uh, uh, instead of your busy schedule uh, now uh, i would like to invite uh, dr dipankar dev secretary teachers council uh, uh, to deliver his vote of thanks over to uh, dr dipankar dev sir I, on behalf of Michael Madhusudan Dutta College Subroom, convey thanks to Professor Shorup Kumar Chakraborty, retired Vice Chancellor, Uttar Bangla Krishi Vishwavidyalay, for his valuable lecture on Professor M S Shaminathan, the father of Green Revolution. I convey my thanks to. Sri N C Sharma, Honorable Director, Department of Higher Education, Government of Tripura, for his speech and support. I also convey my thanks to Professor Badal Dutta, Dean, Faculty of Science, Tripura University, for his valuable speech. I convey my thanks to our principal, Sir Dr. Anupam Guho, and IQS Coordinator, and the whole organizing committee for organizing such beautiful program. I also thanks to the staffs of Director of Higher Education for their support. I also thanks to all the participants for their active participation and support. Thank you all. Thanks uh, to Dr. Dipankar Dev uh, for his vote uh, of thanks. Now we are at the very uh, uh, last end of today's event. Now uh, we shall play the national anthem, and we shall tune with this. भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड़ उत्कड़वंगा भिंज हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल धितरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे our program on the tribute to Professor M. S. Shaminathan, the glorious son of Mother India, is uh, concluded here. Uh, again, thanks to everyone for being with us on behalf of Michael Madhusudan Dutta College. Jai Hind. Have a good day.